Welcome to TV on TV. I'm State Representative Tommy Vitolo. Today is Thursday, January 11th, 2024, our first episode in 2024. And you are watching it on Brookline Interactive Group, Brookline's public access resource. We've got a great guest for us today. We always have a great guest. We have a great guest today. Our guest is Susan Park. She lives in Coolidge Corner and she's a children's author. And of course, it's a pre recorded interview. We talked about the kind of children's literature she writes, what inspires her, what her process is, how she gets it published, illustrated. Super interesting. Stay tuned. But first, of course, the news. Multiple leaders in the United States Senate have said that the timeline for getting spending bills across the finish line is extremely tight. Due to continuing resolutions passed late last year, Congress has two upcoming deadlines to pass the fiscal year 24 budget, the first of which is January 19th. President Biden gave two speeches this week in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, and Charleston, South Carolina. The first marked the anniversary of the January 6th insurrection, laying out the need to protect our democracy. The second was given at the site of the 2015 white supremacist attack, echoing thoughts from earlier in the week. Top senators on the Finance Committee have begun negotiating a package of tax breaks and changes, including limits on the employee retention tax credit and expanding the child tax credit. The Massachusetts Water Resources Authority, the MWRA, has found that COVID-19 levels in Boston area wastewater have reached their highest point since December 2021. They have come down just a hair since then. But COVID's in the wastewater, which means COVID is in us. And, and, and we need to be publicly aware and use our public health practices to bring those levels back down again. After a disappointing season, Patriots head coach Bill Belichick is in the hot seat. It is yet to be seen if the six-time Super Bowl winning coach will be retained for the 2024 season. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association, NOAA, has reported that 2023 tied with 2012 as the hottest year on record in Massachusetts. Brookline will set, be celebrating Martin Luther King Jr. Day on Monday the 15th with a program at the Coolidge Corner Theater. The program will include remarks from Boston University Professor of Religion Margarita Guillory, the Brookline Poet Laureate, and Reggie Gibson and the Guy Mendelo Ensemble. Brookline.News has reported that four candidates have announced campaigns for select board and two candidates have announced campaigns for school committee, launching the 2024 local election season. Of course, we will have more on that here on Brookline Interactive Group, including the election night results show hosted by yours truly. But that information is coming soon, not today. Brookline Mothers Out Front will have new leadership this year and Suddeth who had been co-coordinator for three years, is joining the state organization and stepping down from her position in Brookline. Laura Knott and Tracy Burns will step into co-coordinating roles. Folks, there's a lot going on. Let's take a minute, take a deep breath, and then hang tight. I'll see you on the flip side with Susan Park, Brookline children's author. See you soon. Welcome back, folks. I'm so glad you're still with us here on TV on TV. As promised, we've got an interview today with Susan Park, who actually is quite a lot of things to quite a lot of people. We're going to talk about her role, her experiences as a children's author, and we're going to talk about those books. Susan, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Tommy. It's always great to see you. Now, Susan, I don't know you through your children's books, as I stopped reading children's books a few years ago, and my children kind of got tired of me hanging out around them at bedtime. Um, but I can't wait to hear more about it. Before we talk about the children's books, though, um, I know you through other capacities. I know you're busy doing a lot of different things. Susan, tell us about some of the things you do here in Brookline. Okay, sure. Thanks. Um well, so I am a uh, town meeting member in Precinct 17. And before uh, the precincts were redistricted, I was the uh, town meeting member for Precinct 2. 
And um, I've also in the past um, was loved uh, writing articles for the Brookline tab, um, helped as many as like the people who are watching this, everyone loves to volunteer for our schools and our community. Um, I fall into that too, was um, helped a lot with Florida Rough and Really with International Night and the eighth grade play and just all sorts of things. And it's it's just great to be in Brookline. There's a lot of community and love here. So you live right in the heart of Coolidge Corner for folks like me, 17 and two tell me that, but not every viewer has got that map really memorized. Um, and of course, Florida Rough and Ridley, formerly Devotion uh, on Harvard Street. To be involved with the school, sounds like you're a school parent. Yeah, I am. Um, uh, my husband, Key, and I, we are so lucky. We have three uh, wonderful daughters. Two have already graduated from college, believe it or not. I can't believe it. Um, and they are thriving. And uh, my youngest, she is at BHS. So I've got three and girls, but I also have a honorary little boy, and his name is Quincy, and he is uh, in one of my books. <laughs> and and is it the case that Quincy has four legs and no arms? Yes, that's right. Yeah. So so you know you you worked as a journalist, um, certainly been active in the schools, the town meeting, and of course the town meeting members association. Um, but you're also a children's author. So, you know, I'm sure lots of folks have thought to themselves, hmm, I can write a book. I'll write a children's book. But most of us don't do it. And the ones who do it, many of them don't do it well. So how did you figure this out? How did you sort of become inspired to do this? Okay, well, that's a great question. So my background, I actually used to be an English teacher. And I taught six, seventh, eighth, 11th, 12th, and college. And excuse me, when I was a middle school teacher, I always had this dream to write children's books or YA books, young adult books. And it was always in the back of my mind. And so, you know, as a writer or as like, you know, since I was a teacher, I always would jot down ideas and I would always be like, storing them in my heart, in my mind. And so finally during COVID, um, I just went ahead and did it. And they just, the words just came right out. And so you, did you find an agent? Do you find a publisher? How do you go from, I'm going to write children's books to getting one on a shelf somewhere? Tell us, tell us what that journey was like. So I, um, you know, it's interesting, way back about, I want to say 25 years ago, I actually wrote a young adult novel and I was working with a publisher. And then last, you know, when the cover was supposed to come out, the publisher disappeared. It was really weird. I don't know what happened to the publisher. I'm, I think it was a small press. And um, so when I decided to go ahead and write these books, because the other one's kind of in a drawer. I just looked around, I did a little research and I found a self-publisher, uh, a self-publishing company and um, contacted them and I just worked with them. And, you know, I had my ideas for the book. I had um, my ideas for the pictures and I we just basically worked together. And then, you know, when the first book was finished, I was actually inspired very quickly for my second one and then my third and fourth. So, I mean, it's, I, I feel like um, I'm always a writer at heart. And so these, you know, when these ideas came, I just went ahead and did it. You know, we had the time during COVID. So, and I'm really happy I did because finally it's, you know, they're now on the uh, shelves of Brookline Booksmith. So let's go back in time to the first children's book you wrote several years ago, um, the A to Z book. Why don't you tell us about that first book? Okay, so my first one is actually the A to Z. Yeah, the A to Z. Um, so really that one, the purpose of that one is to, um, I'm a big family person. You know, I have 
three sisters. We're all best friends. I have three daughters and my husband and I, we really value um, communication, family time together. And so this book, it, it's, it's meant to come together and it's got like questions in it. It's got like things to ponder and hence the title family devotions it's it's just a time to pause and reset and slow down yeah so that's that one and so is this book like a how to guide or is it uh stories about doing this what what should we expect so i mean it's a devotional so it's you know it it talks there's faith involved there's um a write up. So I've written about different things. Like, for example, um, here, let me just open it here. So I'll just, I just opened up the book. So for Jay, the word is joy. And um, it talks about family time and how it's special and how, you know, the things that we can, let me see, just time to be together. And it, it includes words about faith and it's supposed to inspire and encourage. And then there's questions. So everyone in the family, when I designed it, it was about, so that everyone can be involved. Like I could read a question, my daughters, my husband. And then as we share our responses, it's kind of like it promotes more communication. We share ideas, it kind of inspires each other. Yep. And there's pictures and yeah. And so then coming off of that one, you wrote an ABC devotional for little ones. Mm -hmm. And, you know, is that, um, is the intention for the little ones to, to read it directly or how does, how does that work? Well, here's the cover of the ABC divisions for little ones. So you can see the ABCs, they're in donut letters. And um, the intention is, you know, the, the little babies can't read. So really it's like parents can read to their kids. But I know like with my three girls, I was reading to them when they were babies. Like they would literally sit in my lap and I would read, even though they couldn't read. And um, that's just something I always did with them. So that was my intention that parents would read to their kids. But then as they're getting older, year to year, they see the letters and kids are like sponges. They can memorize and they learn very quickly. So, you know, of course, my hope is that the, the kids would learn their ABCs even before they could write them. And did you write these two sort of in rapid succession or you kind of did the first and then took a deep breath? Well, so I wrote the first one and... Um, yeah, I mean, as I was writing the first one, I got the idea of the second one. So I was doing them at the same time. But the first one, the this one, um, you know, this one I sat down and wrote it all out, came up with all the picture ideas, did all that first. But then, you know, I started thinking about the second one, too, for the younger kids. Because the, the first one is is more for like, I would say, um, you know, like five and up, five and up. Whereas then I thought, well, what about the little kids, the 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 toddlers or the, the kids who don't know how to read yet and they're learning to read. So then I came up with the second one. And did you do the illustrations? No, I didn't. I didn't. But I... Um, was very detailed in what I wanted on each page. So I told my illustrator, um, let's let's have this idea, let's do this. And then she would give me some pictures. And then, I mean, sometimes we would just have to start from scratch, you know? So it's, I would, you I really try to have an idea of what I wanted um, when I was working with the illustrator. And so then your third book, um sort of a local hit, uh, I think in some ways, what happens at the dog park, uh, which dog park? So the setting of the book is Amory Park, 
right here in North Brookline. And uh, that's not a devotional. It's a different. It's a different kind of book. What, what, what should readers expect with this one? So, right. What happens at the dog park? Um, the fun thing about this book, of course, there's a lot of dogs on the cover, and the inspiration, the setting is Amory Park. But the fun thing about this book is that a lot of the dogs mentioned in here are the dogs who come to Amory Park and they frequent the park um, a lot. So it's it was just really fun. And so when this became published, I told um, you know all our friends who go to Amory that their dog is featured in here and they were thrilled. And And what are the kinds of things that happen at the dog park? Spoiler alert. Well, I don't know if I, I you got to get, you got to go read the book. <laughs> you got to uh, read the book. However, I, what I do want to say is, um, I could tell you one of the reasons why I wrote this book is, you know, I, because like, I love green spaces. I love, I love all the parks in Brookline. I think Erin um, and her team, they do such an amazing job. And the dog park, it just, for our family, it just brings us a lot of joy. You know, we go there, we unleash Quincy, he runs, and then there's like so many other dogs there and it promotes like well-being. And, um, you know, like you probably heard that the Surgeon General announced that there's a mental health crisis. Um, and they announced that in May and prior to that in uh, October, it's like the National uh, pediatrician association there are all these medical associations also made that announcement because of of covid as we all know but um it's you know like going to the parks being outdoors being with others communicating with others those are all like great things and so those are the experiences that i had and my family had and our friends have going to these parks and i wanted to like put that all together in a book and that was inspiration. I love it. I love it. Uh, but that's not your most recent book. Uh, you've got a fourth one out. Right. And the fourth one is this one, How Puppies Make Me Feel. And this one's really, I love this book so much, Tommy. It, it looks like from the cover, puppies make you feel wet. <laughs> right. And we, well, we used to have a pug so that we used to have two pugs. So there's the pug. But, uh, and um, and so that it seems like that book actually is a little bit inspired by your own family, including the four legged parts. Yeah, well, and I, you know, it was really important to me as um, an educator, as a mom. Um, you know, I really thought that like I love the idea of like I really value communication, communicating with with everyone. And um, I thought it would be so great to combine puppies that put big smiles on kids' faces and adults' faces, and then um, feelings. And I really wanted the kids and the parents who read to their kids to be able to give tools to kids, like let them name their feelings and, and so that they could learn that early on. Because then once you can name your feelings, then you've given them tools. And um, and then at the end of the book, there's something really sweet that happens. And um, but I won't tell you what that is. You did mention where we can find the books. You mentioned Brookline Booksmith, of course, right in Coolidge Corner. Um, I suppose that's probably not the only place one can find these books. Right. You can find them on Kindle, Amazon Kindle. You can find them on Amazon and um, Barnes and Nobles online. And um, only in English? Well, no, I guess they are all in Spanish. They're all available in Spanish um, on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles online. And actually all the um, K through eight schools in Brookline, every single uh, library has a copy of the puppy books. Oh, that's great. And um, you got another book in the works? Um, right now, no. 
right now I'm going to take a little breather, but if I had some time to process, yes, I definitely would be writing some more books. So you think maybe someday, but not, not anytime right around the corner, you know, you're going to get some, maybe you already have some ideas written down and you'll get some new ideas and, and turn them into a book. Do you, what would you, what has been in your experience, sort of the, the total amount of time between when you say, okay, I'm going to sit down and start writing. And when you have that copy in your hand, what's the, what's the, the time it takes to, to get the whole journey done? When you have the final copy. So, yeah, I mean, that is probably a year and a half, maybe a year and a half, because there's a lot of um, conversations that go on with your publisher and your editor and your illustrator. And so to get it just right, um, there's a lot of back and forth and, and then there's a lot of time in between. So it takes time to do it right. Mm -hmm. And do you have any advice for anyone who's thinking about um, trying their hand at being a children's author? Yeah, um, like I feel like everyone has a story within them. You know, I've, I've met so many people who have said, you know, I want to do that too. And how do I get started? And so my advice would be, yeah, just get a notebook, write, jot down some ideas. When ideas come to you, write it down and sit down and just start at it. Um, writing is, is uh, definitely a process. You know, any writing teacher will tell you it's, it, writing is a process that there's a lot of drafts that, um, you know, because you're going to be editing, you, you, you change paragraphs around, you change lines. Uh, but the key is if, is to make time for it. Now, do you find you need to have like quiet time in the same spot, you know, with the same pen or something like, or can you just kind of, when you get some time, just get to it wherever you're at? I mean, I think everyone's different, but for me, I definitely work on my laptop, you know, so I need, I need my laptop. I need my desk. Uh, but you know, other people, maybe it's, maybe they want to just like get a notebook and write freehand it, you know, maybe that's it. But, um, but definitely the quiet is important. It's hard to put thoughts down on paper when there's a zillion things going on or if it's loud and kind of crazy at home. Now, did the titles come at the beginning or in the middle or at the end? Did they change? I think, you know, titles are are worth consideration and, and uh, sort of an important moment. Uh, so how did the titles come about? So all my titles came at the end. So I usually write my books first and then I rewrite them or I'm always like trying to tweak it until it's just right and then I'll think about the title and sometimes sometimes there's no title for days or weeks uh, but once the title emerges then that's the one yeah and and did you know it when you heard it it was sort of like oh that's it yeah I mean I think I was like you know it's gonna this is it yeah yeah, and it's never like should it be this one or that one. I'm I know, I know, and I know. <laughs> and and um, same illustrator for all the books. Yep, same illustrator. How did you find her? Well, the the publishing company they have an illustrator in house. I see. So, yeah, so she the publisher found the illustrator for me. Have you ever met her, like in person? No. I have that. No. Um, and does the does the illustrator give any feedback about the words, or is it just sort of like, you know, the words are the words, and I just got to draw them up? Yeah. No. The illustrator. Well, <clears throat> she. Yeah. She pretty much like the words are. She, her job is to make a picture, draw a picture that reflects the words, but um, I guess I have heard that sometimes the illustrators have 
you know, they will kind of come up with their own pictures. But this particular illustrator, she really wanted my feedback. She really wanted to know what I want and like what was my vision. So I, for every single page, like in brackets, I had in detail, let's put this dog, this type of dog, this color doing this with this person. <laughs> but, and then once I got the, um, once I got some drafts and if, if something wasn't right, you know, I just communicate that to her and then she would redraw it like that. So do you have any advice for parents um, on how to pick books or even for people who are buying gifts, right? How do you, how do you know what's a good book for a child? How can you sort of figure that out? So, you know, after parenting three girls, I know by now it's, you know, let the kids pick their books, you know, take them to the library and see where they gravitate, you know, just take them, show them books, and then they're going to find the ones that they like. And of course, uh, parents have a say too. Like I remember when my girls were little, we'd go to the library and we would come home with a lot of books and they would pick a lot, but I would also pick a bunch, you know? So, and then, you know, then we mix it all up. And, but, but they also have, um, you know, they have, um, what is it? Um, you can like do Google searches. If you're looking for a particular book on this topic, you could you could do that too. So if your kid like loves basketball, definitely like go get some books on basketball. They will love it. You know, if your kids love books on puppies or dogs, they love animals. Like my oldest wanted to be a vet forever. Like these are the books that I would have picked for her because she would have loved seeing all the, the puppies, you know, but um, but yeah, I make it a family event, like go to the library, have fun and let them fall in love with books and reading. And what do, what have your daughters said about your book? Surely they've, they've had a look. Yeah, no, my kids, they, they love my books. They, um, they're really happy and they, they said that it brings up, brings them a lot of happy feels. So it's, it's been fun working putting this together and then showing them the end results. So, and I hope that, I know this is way down the road, but one day when I'm a grandmother and they have little ones, like I'm glad that these will be in their bookshelves. I love it. Well, Susan, thank you for all of the work you do on behalf of all of Brookline residents uh, in your roles in politics and government. Uh, delighted to learn more about uh, what it is to be a children's author and and the books you wrote. Uh, folks, you can find them at the Brookline Booksmith. Uh, Susan Park, her most recent, How Puppies Make Me Feel. And of course, um, if you want them in Spanish, head to, head to the Amazon and find them in Spanish. If you want them in English, I recommend you shop locally. Uh, Susan, thanks for being here with us today on Brookline Interactive Group. Thanks so much, Tommy. It was great to see you. And folks, we'll see you next week right here on TV on TV. See you then.